Let's revise what you know about work, energy and power. To tell you the truth, you've only really learned about energy, and that was way back in grade 10, so we have a lot of catching up to do. You were probably told that energy is the ability to do work. That's a very strange way to define something, in terms of something else you don't really know about. The term work in physics means mechanical work, which is done when a force displaces an object. So energy is able to force objects to move. There are two types of energy. Kinetic energy, which is the energy generated by an object due to its motion, and potential energy, which is energy that's stored in the object. An object possesses kinetic energy because it is moving. We calculate the amount of kinetic energy by using the formula Ek is equal to half times its mass times its velocity squared. Ek equals one half times m times v squared. A soccer player has a mass of 68 kilograms and dribbles the ball at 6 meters per second towards the goal. Calculate the player's kinetic energy. The soccer player has a mass of 68 kilograms. He's moving at a constant speed of 6 meters per second towards the goal. Use the formula Ek is equal to half times the mass times the speed squared. Substitute the values and remember to square the speed. 1,224 joules is the answer. Remember that the SI unit of energy is the joule. Let's try another problem on kinetic energy. At what speed is a car travelling if it has 450 kilojoules of kinetic energy? The mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. The kinetic energy of the car is 450 kilojoules. We need to convert the kilojoules to joules, so we multiply by the 1,000. The kinetic energy of the car is 450,000 joules. The mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. Ek is equal to half times mass times the speed squared. Substitute the values and solve for v squared. Now take the square root of v squared to calculate the speed of the car as 30 meters per second. Now let's take a look at potential energy. There are many different types of potential energy, for example, chemical, electrical, gravitational, elastic, and nuclear potential energy. Our study of energy, work, and power deals only with gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is the energy an object possesses due to its position above a reference point. We calculate that the amount of gravitational potential energy is Ep equals m times g times h. m stands for the mass of the object in kilograms. G stands for the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared. And H stands for the change in height of the object above or below the reference point.
A child of a mass of 15 kilograms climbs up 1,5 meters onto a cupboard. How much potential energy has she gained? The mass of the child, m, equals 15 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity, g, is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. The change in height from the floor to the top of the cupboard is 1.5 meters. The potential energy gained is EP equals M times G times H. Substitute the values and we calculate the answer is 220,5 joules. When we talk about the mechanical energy of an object, we are referring to the sum of its kinetic and gravitational potential energy at that point. Em is equal to Ek plus Ep. Let's look at an example. A basketball player throws the ball vertically up in the air. When the ball is 1.2 meters above his hand, it's traveling upwards at 4 meters per second. The mass of the ball is 0, 0,625 kilograms. Calculate the mechanical energy of the ball at this height. The mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy. that is half mv squared plus mgh. Substitute the values carefully and remember to square the speed. The ball has 12,35 joules of mechanical energy. The law of conservation of mechanical energy states that in the absence of friction or air resistance, the mechanical energy of a system remains constant. This tells us that when there is no dissipative force acting on an object, its mechanical energy remains constant. Let's apply this idea to the basketball. If air resistance is so small that its effect can be ignored, then the mechanical energy of the ball when it is thrown up into the air is the same as its mechanical energy at 1,2 meters above the player's hand, and it's the same even when the ball reaches its maximum height above the player's hand. This is a very useful piece of information when solving problems. Let's find out the speed of the ball when it left the player's hand. The mechanical energy of the ball is 12,35 joules. Before the ball leaves the player's hand, its height is 0 meters above his hand. So its gravitational potential energy at this height is zero. All the energy it possesses is kinetic energy. It's leaving his hand with a maximum value of speed. Let's calculate the maximum speed. Em is equal to the sum of Ek and Ep. But we know that Ep is equal to zero, so Em is equal to half times the mass of the ball times its maximum speed squared. Substitute the values and calculate the value of V squared, which is 39,52. Take the square root of 39,52 to find the value of V. We find that the ball left his hand with a speed of 6,29 meters per second. Now let's find out the maximum height that the ball reaches above his hand. 
At its maximum height, the ball changes direction from going up to coming back down again. Its velocity is zero at this stage. So its kinetic energy is also zero. At the maximum height, the mechanical energy of the ball is equal to its maximum gravitational potential energy. E, mechanical, equals the sum of EK and EP. But EK is zero at maximum height, therefore EM equals EP maximum. 12,35 is equal to 0, 0,625 times 9,8 times h. Change the subject of the formula and calculate the value of h. And we get 2,02 meters. The law of conservation of mechanical energy applies only to those systems when there are no external dissipative forces acting on the object. No friction, no air resistance. But there is another conservation of energy law. It's called the law of conservation of energy. It applies to all situations at all times. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another, or transferred from one object to another. This law is universal. It tells us that there is a fixed amount of energy in the whole universe. And that nothing and no one can create any more energy, nor can that energy be destroyed. So, now we're ready to move on to find out about work and power, and to learn more about the law of conservation of energy when friction and or air resistance are acting on an object.